All right, week two. Uh, today is going to be practice. Okay, today is going to be practice on electric fields, electric forces. So there's not going to be any new content today. There will be new content tomorrow, um, but today, no. Um, so um, the the but I have there is a warm up question as you can see in front of you right now, and there will be a wrap up question, and there will be some homework. So uh, keep that in mind that I still expect you to, you know, go through this, do the stuff today. There's just no new content. So um, let's look at the warm-up question here. What is the direction of the electric field to the left of a positive charge? And then which direction will a negative charge move if put in that position? Okay, that's your warm-up question there. Just, you know, I don't need any numbers here, just directions and... Yeah, so pause this, tell me what you get in the form. Okay, so I'm actually going to use the, uh, the the lab to kind of show this off. This is a helpful thing here. So I want the field to the left of a positive charge. So I'm going to take a positive charge, I'll put it, I don't know, there, I guess. Sure, I'll just, well, it doesn't matter. Put it there. That's where a uh, positive charge, so to the left of the positive charge, which direction is the field? the left okay and that makes sense remember how from a positive charge the field is always pointing away from the positive charge right so as I move this around the positive charge it's always pointing away from it okay. now the follow-up question is which direction is the is a negative charge going to go now there's two ways to think of this one way is just the simple way that we know about in terms of well if it's a positive and a negative charge what happens they go together right so if I put a negative charge here it's going to want to go towards the positive the other way to think of it is your charge is going to move in the direction uh, in a direction that depends on the direction of the field. So how this works is that my field is pointing to the left. What this means is that if I put a positive charge here, it will move to the left. It will follow the field line. Okay, it will follow the field line to the left. Or if I put a negative charge here, it's going to do the opposite. Okay. And so this is the better way to think about it because it's, it makes sense for all scenarios, right? So for example, let me put a bunch of random charges all over the place. Right there, I'm gonna put one there, there, uh, let's do there, another negative one here, right? If I had this here and I said, okay, at, you know, at this position, which direction is my charge going to go? You'd be like, uh, I don't know, right? It's it's a lot really hard to tell. Or it's actually here. Let me go even further. Let me just put it like right in the middle. Like right... Mm, like there. Okay. Which direction is it going to go? It's like, I don't know. Well, the way you know is if you have the, the direction of the field at that position. At this position, the field is pointing this way. That means a positive charge is going to follow that and, and want to go this way. A negative charge is going to want to do the opposite and go the other way. Now, keep in mind that this will change pretty quickly, right? So even though I move this way, all of a sudden now the field is pointing that way, right? So it's not like, oh, it's going to only go that way or whatever. It's going to follow the line. So it's going to follow it and, you know, going to follow it. So it would follow it that way, right? If I had a positive charge. If I had a negative charge, it would follow towards that one, right? Apparently how this would work. Meanwhile, if I had something here, it'd be going there if I had something here it would be going like that so you notice that was like a weird kind of see it kind of doubles but it kind of does this like swoopy motion right there so it, it's it can get very complicated of course but you generally want to think of it in terms of either following the line the direction of the field or doing going opposite the direction of the field that's what's best way to think about it okay uh let me reset this and let's move on okay so uh, for some practice, again, the math-wise, what we're looking at is there's two things, right? There's the field, which is KQ over R squared, and then there's from that the force, which is Q times E, okay? So those are the equations we have, and then we also have uh, that K is 9 times 10 to the 9, and positive charges follow field lines, I'll just say negative charges do the opposite okay so that's kind of what we have right that's sort of that's our, our formula sheet as of now basically okay that's what we have um the only thing to clarify is that again this q and this q 
are not the same. Okay, they're different charges. So this is the remember, this is the charge that creates the field. This is some other charge thrown into that field. Okay, so just remember that these two charges are different. So let's actually take this first question here and sort of put some numbers into it as an example. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a couple examples here. It's not gonna be super long, but I'm I'm gonna I'm probably gonna walk through two examples, or maybe two or three, and then I'm gonna have you do one for the wrap up question. So, um, what is the direction of the electric field? Okay, so let's say you have, um, what is the strength of the electric field? Uh, half a meter to the left of a five microcoulomb charge. Let's say, I'll, I'll clarify, I'll say plus five. And then follow-up question. Um, oh, what is the strength? I'll say and direction. And then follow-up question will be um, if a negative two microcoulomb charge is put in that position, what will the oops? What will the strength and direction of the electric force B. Okay, so basically I'm just taking the warm-up question and adding actual numbers to it. So first, what is the strength and direction of the electric field half a meter to the left of the of this charge? Okay, so the strength, well, here we this is gonna be strength of the field, so we want the E equation, AQ over R squared. So K, oops, there. So K is your nine times 10 to the nine, uh, Q is, the, again, the charge creating the field, and that's the 5 microcoulombs. So that's 5 times 10 to the negative 6. And that's divided by the distance squared, and it's half a meter, right? Half a meter to the left. So, it's going to be 0 0.5 squared. So, multiplying these out, we have uh, 9 times 5, so that gives you 45, times... 10 to the 9 times 10 to negative 6, that's 10 to the 3. And I know that's not in correct scientific notation, I'll get to that. And then divided by 0.5 squared, 0.5 squared is 0.25. So this ends up being, uh, let's say it was multiplying by 4, so that would be uh, 180 times 10 to the 3, which ends up being that E equals... Uh, 180 to the three is 100. Yeah, uh, 180 thousand newtons per coulomb. And the direction, uh, again, this is to the uh to the left of a positive charge. So again, uh, was direction of the field to the left of the positive charge? Oh, I didn't even put the answer in here. Uh, it's <laughs> um uh the field is to the left while the Negative charge moves to the right. Okay. That's your answer for that. Um, and so, same thing here. So, the field's direction is, that's not what I wanted to do, to the left. Okay, so then follow up question. Uh, what is the, if a negative two microcoulomb charge is put in that position, what is the strength direction of the force? So, um, here, we're going to take the field we just got and multiply it by this new charge. Now remember, I've said to kind of ignore the positives and negatives for this just because the positives and negatives determine the direction. So we're going to account for that just at the end of this. So this new charge is 2 microcoulombs. And you're multiplying it by the strength of the field. Uh, and just for simplicity's sake, let me just do it in calculator because I'm lazy. So two microcoulombs, by the way, is 0 0.12, that's that, times that, 0 0.36. I guess I'll mold it, so 0 0.36. Uh, and the question is, uh, what is the direction that the force should be? So since it's negative, it's a negative charge, um, it's going to go in the opposite direction of the field. So the field is pointing to the left. So therefore, this force would be to the right. Okay. 
So that's sort of the basics of that there. Okay, let's do a bit of a different quest. Let's do let's add another layer on this. Because so far we're just talking about uh one charge creating a field. So let's do a bit more of a complicated question. Um let's see. Uh you have a plus eight microcoulomb charge. Uh one meter to the left of a plus five. Eh, I say plus six. Plus six microcoulomb charge. What is the total electric field strength halfway between the charges? Okay, so now we have two charges. Um, and then, and what is the strength halfway between the middle? Or halfway in the middle between them. So... The rule for this is we have to find the electric field from each charge separately and then go from there. So we're going to have E1. It's going to be KQ1 divided by R1 squared. And K is always K. Um, Q is, let's just pick, let's pick the first one. So let's pick the 8. Um, and then it's the distance uh, from the first one. So I'm asking for what is the total electric field strength halfway between them? So if they're a meter apart from each other, then halfway between that is going to be 0.5 meters. So this gets, let's see, the top becomes 9 times 8 is 72 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 0 0.25. And that is going to equal... No, the same as times 4, 288. Okay, so. Oh, this is positive 3. Whoops. Okay, I was like, wait a minute. Okay, yeah. Because, yeah, 10 to the 9, 10 to the negative 6, yeah, positive 3. Okay. So this becomes 288 times 10 to the 3, which means we get a E1 of that. And what's the direction? Okay, so if the, the plus 8 microcoulomb charge is on the left, and we're halfway between the two charges, that means we are to the right of this one, okay? We're to the right of this one, we are to the left of this one. So when we're talking about this one, which direction is the field if we're to the right of it? Well, it's to the right. Okay. Second one. Okay, 9 times 10 to the 9 times, now it's 6, times 10 to the negative 6, divided by, again, we're halfway between them, so the distance is the same. So, let's see, front here, 9 times 6 is 54, times 10 to the 3, divided by 0 0.25, I should be consistent with parentheses. Okay, and this, uh, 116, right? Well, that's the wrong thing. 216, right, okay, can't math. And so you end up getting E2 equals 216,000. And now, again, we're talking about we're halfway between these two charges. This one's on the left, this one's on the right, and now we're talking about this charge. So now we're on the left of it, and it's going to be to the left like that. So, in this qu case, what's the total field? Well, we have this amount to the left, and then this amount to the right, or this amount to the right, this amount to the left, which means since they're in opposite directions, you're going to subtract them. So, 288 minus 216 gives you 72. You get... 72,000 newtons per coulomb, and the direction of the total is that, well, it was more of it was to the right than to the left, which means this total amount is going to be to the right. Okay, uh, so the theme is fairly straightforward in that sense there. Um, and let's see if we can actually kind of see this. Now, I'm going to... 
Uh, I'm going to use the this here. Now, I'm not going to do this uh, based off of uh, microcoulombs because these charges are nanocoulombs. So I'm just going to pretend everything is uh, a nano. Uh, okay, I want to... Yeah, how much... That's 20 centimeters? Okay. Because I want to see if I can get this, like, precise. Okay, so that... Uh, precise enough. Okay. So that means I want... One, two, three, it's going to take a while, four, five, six, seven, eight, and one, two, three, Four, five, six. Okay, and then I want it halfway between them. Here, 64, seven. Okay, you can see how much, see how quickly the amount changes between, you know, 64, 79, right? So, yeah, you can see how from kind of halfway between the two, the 72,000 number, it does make sense. And because, again, since these are nano coulomb charges, this is a thousand times less of a charge. So my answer would be a thousand times less than here than my actual answer. So instead of 79.5, it would if I had these as microcoulomb charged, it would be 79,000. So yeah, it does line up pretty well. Um, again, it's hard to show this precisely, but you can at least get an idea that seems to work out pretty well. Okay, so now second question. Uh, I'm gonna actually keep everything the same. So same scenario as before, but now find the position where the total electric field is zero. Okay, so this is a little bit more tricky, right? Now, so we have to kind of think about this going backwards. Now for the total electric field to be zero, that means the first field minus the second field has to equal zero, which therefore means the first field has to equal the second field. In addition, they have to be in opposite directions, right? So they're gonna to have to be in opposite directions for this to work. Um, now granted, when we're between the two charges, it is in opposite directions, right? One of them is, they're both, so that's not gonna be a problem. So we need to set this where the two charges are equal. So let's be, and let's be a bit careful about this. So we have uh, E1 would therefore be K, Q1 divided by R1 squared equals K Q2 divided by R2 squared. Oops. Now, before, both of the R values were both 0.5 because I was halfway between them. Now you don't know what they are. In fact, they're gonna, they are going to be different. Um, so we have to be careful about this. Now we can cancel the Ks, right? There's K on both sides, so we can just cancel that. So what are we left with? Um, oh, another thing to note is that, okay, in terms of the R values, we don't know what either of them is, but remember R1 is the distance from the first charge. R2 is the distance from the second charge. Now it's going to be somewhere in between the two, which therefore means that R1 plus R2 is going to equal the total distance between the two charges. So what we do know is that R1 plus R2 equals one. So you maybe can see how we might be able to manipulate this around. So let's kind of see what we got here. Again, the Ks go away. So we have Q1 divided by R1 squared equals K Q2 divided by, now here, I'm gonna do some tricky algebra here and say that, well, I can manipulate this to say instead of R1 plus R2 equals one, I can say R2 equals one minus R1. So I can plug that in down here. Okay, now I'm going to cross multiply. Okay, so this negative part down here, or this denominator, is going to be multiplied up onto this side of this fraction, and this R1 is going to be multiplied up on the other side. So we're going to get, therefore, 
q1 times 1 minus r1 squared equals q2 r1 squared. Okay, I've cross multiplied. Um, now here, again, you could sort of do whatever, there's a bunch of different algebraic ways to solve for this if you want. There's several different things you could do. Um, I'm going to factor, or uh, foil, whatever. I'm going to multiply out this thing here. So, uh, yeah, that'd be a foil. So, let's keep the Q1 as it is. And we have, so, uh, so 1, uh, and this is going to be 2 times, so it'd be 2 R1 minus R1 squared. Oh, no, plus R1 squared. Great, because it's right. Okay. So that is your foil of this squared. And that equals Q2 times R1 squared. Um, so now I can distribute the Q1. So I get Q1 minus 2 Q1 R1 plus Q1 R1 squared equals Q2 R1 squared. Okay, now I can subtract. Now what I can do is I have this piece that is uh, Q1 is something times R1 squared, and this piece is something times R1 squared. So if I subtract this over here, I can sort of mess with the coefficients. I can get something like uh, this here. Q1 minus 2. That's not a 2. 2 Q1 R1 plus Q1 minus Q2 times R1 squared equals zero, okay? You may recognize what I'm gonna be doing here. Uh, I'm setting up a quadratic formula. So here's, this is gonna work. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna put plug in numbers for the Q1 and Q2, and I'm also just gonna switch everything around. So I'm gonna have the R1, the R squared term in, over first, and then this around. So this ends up being, let's see, Q1 minus Q2, Q1, uh, in this case was the first one. So that was eight microcoulombs and then minus six microcoulombs. So this becomes two uh, times 10 to the negative six, because it's the eight minus the six times R1 squared minus two times Q1. So that would be Q1 again is eight. So that would be 16. R1. Again, you might think, oh, it's not in correct scientific notation. All right, hold on, I'm going to show you something. And then plus the Q1 at the end, which is 8 uh, times 10 to the negative 6. And that equals 0. Now, what's nice is every single one of these terms has a 10 to the negative 6. So what you can do is actually just divide out 10 to the negative 6. You don't need it. So you just get 2 R1 squared minus 16 R1 plus Eight equals zero, and you can actually go a step further, um, and because all that has a two in it, so you can divide all that by two, and you get r one squared equals eight. That's not an eight. Eight r one plus four equals zero, and now you gotta solve. Yep, you gotta solve for this now. So we have to solve for this, uh, and let's see what we. Yet. Uh, there might be something I could think about of factoring it, but I'm just going to go straight for the quadratic formula. So, which is, uh, if you don't remember, negative b plus or minus, wait, what's the plus or minus? Is that? No, that's square root. Uh, which is the code for the plus or minus? That's not it. I think it's 249, 248, 247, 246. Okay, it's 241. Okay, that was it. Okay, negative b plus or minus the square root of uh, b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, oh, I gotta double parentheses this. 
Okay, so that's what we got to put this in. So, I know this is everyone's favorite thing they want to do right now. So, negative b is going to be 8. That, nope, wrong one. There. Plus or minus the square root of 8, negative 8 squared, which is 64, minus 4 times 1 times 4, so that's 16, um, divided by 2a, which is just 1, so just 2. Okay, so um, 64 minus 16 becomes 48, right? Yes. So this becomes uh, 8 minus the square root of 48 divided by 2. Uh, square root of 48, again, is not nice, um, but let's just uh, keep things... Uh, what's it? Uh, so 48 is 16 times 3, which means this becomes 8 plus or minus 4 times the square root of 3 divided by 2. So 2 divides through all that, and you end up getting uh, 4 plus or minus 2 uh, square root of 3. <laughs> now what does that equal? Uh, well, let's find out. So, uh, square root of 3 is, like, something. Uh, is there an easy square root number? Do I have to do the thing? Yeah, it seems like the good thing. Okay. Square root of 3 times 2 is, oops, 2. Uh, seems to be this here, so... That's different font. Hold on. No, it's a different. No, whatever. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um. So we have four plus or minus this. Now, remember that the whole premise of all of this at the start, well, was that uh both of these distances added together has to e is going to equal one, which means that. This is all solving for R1, right? So therefore, R1 has to be less than 1. Well, the only way for this to be less than 1 is if this was minus. So the answer for this here is going to be the positive version of this. So basically, uh, 0 0.536. So R1 equals 0 0.536 meters. And so therefore R2 is going to be 1 minus this, and that is uh, 0 0.464. Okay, so that is our distances now. Okay, this is really bothering me that the font is different. Okay, so that's Calibri. Let me switch this to Calibri. It was bothering me. It was wrong. Okay, so there's your answers for how far apart for this to be zero. So, and if we kind of maneuver, maneuver this closer in, you have to get really precise and see how... I'm trying to move my mouse. Oh, wait, I almost had it. Nine. Go down one. No. It's really hard to be precise with my mouse because it's my mouse really sensitive. Okay, so you can see it is a little bit off of the middle, right? And so that's where we ended up getting a little bit off of the middle. Not 0.5, but it's 0.53, right? So it's a little bit off from the middle, and it makes sense you have to be further away from the other. Okay, so that's an example of a rather challenging question, just algebraically challenging question, sort of get what we want. So that's an example of at this position, the field will be zero. And if you don't believe me, you can check, you can plug this in, for example, take this distance and plug it in uh, here. For this here and then you can also do the same by taking then this distance and plugging it in for this one here and you should get that these two numbers are the same again one to the right one to the left which means that the total should add well subtract to be zero okay so that's your thing so this is just a lot of kind of not super fun algebra um but you get the idea there okay um let's do uh another example here um, yeah, so let's do one more example. Um, and let's say we have the exact same 
Let me say, let's see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna base it off of this question, but it's gonna, I'm gonna change it a bit. So we have this here. Let's say this, and it says that's now a negative charge. And the question is not the strength halfway between, but let's say what is this field strength? Uh, 0 0.25 meters to the right of the negative six microcoulomb charge. Okay, so that's what we're gonna go for for this here. You have a plus eight, so same kind of setup, but now this one is negative, and um, now we're this sincere. You know what? I can't spell. Let's just have this be the wrap-up question. So we have plus eight microcoulomb charge, one meter to the left of a minus six microcoulomb charge. What is the total electric field strength? 0.25 meters to the right of the minus six uh, microcoulomb charge. Okay, so maybe what would help is to maybe draw this out and just kind of make sure what I'm talking about for all the distance here and how this could work. So pause this. Give you some time to think about it, solve for an answer, and see what you got. Okay, so the first thing for this is what I said is you should try to maybe draw this out. So um, let me actually just start over. So put the grid in. Okay, so that is a meter. I already said that down there. Okay, so uh, I'm going to just proportionalize this here, actually. So I'm going to have this, since it's 8 and it's negative 6, I'm going to have this be 4. And then we'll have this one be negative three. Right, so you can kind of see the difference here. So, um, so the point is, okay, what is the strength, uh, you know, to the uh, 0.25 meters to the right of the, char the negative charge? So if this is your one meter distance, that means negative, it's gonna be about here. Okay, so it's gonna be a fairly strong, seems like the answer is gonna be fairly strong, and based on this, it should be, what is the number, like 400 something? So this says it's about 400. That said, this is with uh, half of the charge, because this, this was plus four, this was minus three, so it should be twice this number, and also a thousand times more. So if anything, it should be like 800,000. Okay, we should expect the number we should get should be somewhere around 800,000 based off of this. So let's see if that's what we get. So first, uh, what did I just press? Okay. Oh, I middle justified it somehow. Oops. Okay. Um, okay. So K. Okay. Now uh, we're again. Let's use the eight first. And then let's be careful about our distance, okay? So these two charges are one meter apart from each other, and I want 0.25 meters to the right of this one. So again, I want this here. However, again, we're measuring it from this one. So this distance I want for the first one is going to be 1.25 meters. Okay, so again, the top part becomes 72 times 10 to the 3. And then divided by 1.25 squared, which is the thing. Squared. 15, okay. Oh, wait, I just, okay. So it'd be 1.565. Okay. Uh, so, oh, I don't know what that is. So 72 divided by 1.565, 46.08. And again, that's times 10 to the 3. Um, so that becomes 46,080 newtons per coulomb. To the Oh, and the direction of this is to the right, right? Because I am, again, you might think, well, wait a minute. No, it's not. But again, I'm, ignore I'm only talking about the field from this charge, right? If I took these away... Right there's my there's my charge. It's to the right. There's my field is to the right because of this charge here. So this one is to the right. Now the one to the left, or the other one. Sorry. Uh, 
10, 9, whoops, 9 times 10 to the 9, times, uh, 9 times, again, 6, again, ignore the negatives, because that's, negatives and positives, because that's only important for direction stuff. So now my distance, again, now I'm going to put these back. And, uh, so now I'm only talking about this charge here. So it'd be like taking these away. So I want my distance to only be 0.25. So, um, let's see. The first of this again becomes 54 times 10 to the 3 divided by 0.25 squared. That'd be 1 16th. Just to make sure I get this right, so that would be 0 0.026, okay, 0 0.065, okay. So that becomes E2 equals 54 divided by 0 0.065, 864 times 10 to the 3, which in other words would be 864,000 newtons per coulomb. And this is to the left, right? Because again, this is from this negative charge to the, it's gonna be pointing in towards the negative charge to the left. So again, my answer here seems like it's about 400 something. Again, this is probably about 400 ish, depending on getting everything right. Um, but again, this is with half charges, right? This is, this I put plus four, this was minus three. So the answer should be about 800 something. So let's check. And it's 800 something to the left. So, the total field, since they're in opposite directions, we're going to subtract them. And so, uh, it doesn't, again, the absolute, the sign of here doesn't really matter a ton, but we have 46,080 minus 864,000 that way. So, what do we get? 46,080 minus 864,000, and you get... And you think, wait a minute, isn't it negative? Well, again, how I specified this was I had the first one minus the second one, meaning I sort of made the first one positive, and I have the first one positive being to the right, and this one is negative, which is to the left. So the fact that I'm getting a negative answer here means that this is to the left. And that seems to make sense. Again, I said this should be about 800,000, and it should be to the left. So, yeah, that seems to work pretty well in that sense there. So there's your answer in that question. And again, I can think of a follow-up question about like if I put a positive charge or a negative charge there, what would the force be and which way would it go? And you can maybe see how this works there. Okay, so I think this practice uh, is pretty good uh, to sort of have, again, get a little bit more sense of how this works. We'll still be doing more of this later, but tomorrow I'm going to be introducing some new stuff. Now it's very similar to this. Okay, that's the thing. So we had forces and fields and we're like, oh, these are both similar, but a little bit different. There's more. Okay, so there's other things that seem to be similar, but different. So that's what we're going to get into tomorrow. And again, we'll practice sort of all everything put together uh, coming f later in the week. So keep that in mind. And yeah, now you do have a homework question. Uh, I don't have it written here off the top, uh, which I should have, but I... It was dumb and forgotten. I don't have the thing open, but it's on the form, so uh, you can put that together and see if you can solve it. Again, even if the question doesn't ask for you to do so, always try to draw out the scenario just to help yourself visualize things better. Now, again, it's annoying to draw things out like on paper, but since you have this resource here with the lab, it can be helpful to kind of try to sort of emulate it in the lab and maybe try to get an answer that sort of helps match up with that. So that's how that thing works there. Okay, uh, hopefully you can do all right with this. And uh, yeah, tomorrow I'll be going over the homework question for t that was assigned for this one and also getting into some new stuff, which is again, unfortunately, very similar to this, though it is a little bit different. So, all right, that's it for now. See you tomorrow.